Welcome back, everybody, this week to Doing It With Styles. And uh, some of you may recognize my guest today uh, from about uh, two and a half, three years ago was the last time you were on the show, right? Well, it was the last time I was on the show discussing my transition, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Then for those of you who remember, may I present Julia Gray. Hi, everybody. (laughs) And also, most of you know from our WTF show, we got the tally over here, who also happens to be Julia's best friend, and who introduced me to Julia, what, a couple of years ago? Three years ago? Mm-hmm. Four years ago? About four years it's ago. Been a, yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Around the time of Matt Lusak, or yeah, Lusak, <laughs> or whatever Matt's name. He still, he still exists. Yes, I know. I know. We're <laughs> friends on Facebook. He's still alive. Anyway, um, so uh, Julia? was here and uh, I interviewed you uh, just prior to your transition. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't remember or haven't figured it out, uh, Julia is a trans woman. Is that the proper term? Transgender woman. Dude, I've learned a lot. This is great. (laughs) I've learned a lot. This is what it's all about. Yes. So uh, I wanted to have you back and let's talk about now that you have transitioned as a female or to a female um, and, and you know my ignorance, so forgive me if I say something that's wrong. No. Don't slap, but you can correct me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because uh, I've been slapped by the best of women, so. <laughs> so, how are you? I'm doing great, and um, there's no words. It's sublime. It's amazing. It's to have my brain and my body not warring constantly, because for my whole life, Waking, sleeping, my body was at war. It was, you know, my brain was saying, where's my vagina? Where's my vagina? Where's my vagina? It just never stopped. Um, I thought, I never wanted to get, I, I got surgery, bottom surgery, for those wondering, um, which is, uh, what is that called? Um, penile inversion vaginoplasty is what it's called. Okay. Where they take the penis, they basically invert it and put it inside of you and use the scrotum to finish the vulva. Um, I never wanted that. I did not want it. Okay. I knew at nine years old that I wasn't a girl and that I wanted to be, but I never wanted it. I thought, you know what? I can embrace. I can love who I am. I can get by. I can do without that. I just never wanted to do it until uh, about four years ago, it became clear to me that A, I'm a lesbian. And B, with a penis, I'm never going to date. Because I'm a lesbian. And no woman and, would and, date me with and, a penis. And thank you for sharing that, because I remember asking you uh, prior to your transition, um, and, and I was gratified that you told me before that interview that I could ask you any question that I wanted and that you answered uh, uh, everything that I had. Because so many of us really have no fucking clue what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people would think that, okay, you're doing this because you're gay, you really like men. Mm-hmm. And so you're feeling that if you transition to a woman, you would have a better chance with men. But I believe that, that at the time, that when I asked you that question, you said what you're saying now, that you really well, liked women. It's, it's, well, the big thing is it's not about sex. No, 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 I understand that. No, but I, I, I want to make but, this But clear. not everybody knows that. Right, because one of the questions, and it's a legitimate question that I was asked, is if you're a gay woman, why did you get rid of your penis? Or if you're a woman and you want to date women, why did you get rid of your penis? It's because it's about identity. It's about identity. It's about, like I said earlier, it's about what my brain thinks I have versus what my body is. And that creates a painful schism within um, so, yeah, it's it's about identity. Well, I think also it's important to know, or just interesting, I guess, to know, because I, most people who don't know, I think, assume that that yeah, that transgender women are gay men, and 
I I think well I don't think I like I pretty much thought the same thing. Um, but the moon the, like I don't know, like a long time ago. But I remember when I I think I think it was twenty four when I saw uh, the documentary Trinidad, and uh, at that point I I was surprised to learn that um, most transgendered women are actually attracted to other women and mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of married couples like male male female married couples um when after the tr after the transition a lot of them manage to stay together yeah um yeah. a lot of them don't survive well, if, that, you, but... if you have a basic foundation uh other than a sexual one in a marriage then it, it, I mean it makes perfect sense because if you you married someone that you loved because you loved them not because I love them because of this sexual preference mm -hmm. um, you know yeah it makes you know uh, it, it uh, uh, have you are there any of your friends that you had from years ago that uh, that you're still in contact with that know about the transition or have um, there's been one or two. Yeah. Um, no real, <clears throat> nothing really to remark about. You know, no real surprise, no real nothing. Just okay. happiness, happy for me. That's really all. Okay, about, good. And that, that was going to be my question. Were they, yeah. uh, I mean, did they have any indication before you transitioned no. that you were going to do that? Okay. No, and so just one day you go, hi, it's me, Julia. Yeah. 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 And, so, uh, I mean, I guess, sorry, but beyond, like, I mean, beyond. I'm the, asking these the, questions like, out of ignorance. The interesting so. part of that or whatever is just, it is important to know that transgender women are not gay men who are just figured you know if i turned right. this if i right. turned this inside out i'd get a lot more action right right yeah not not at all yeah not at all um i have about this much interest in dating men the vast majority of my interest is in dating women um, me too yeah well, no i well, there <laughs> sorry you go. maybe you're a gay woman yeah, body i too. am a lesbian yes but i've always I, been well, a lesbian I, and i'm can proud of I it can i share uh the conversation that we ha we had about that prior to like prior to even knowing that this surgery was going to be a possibility really far I don't ago. know what it is but I know um, you can share oh, about about whether you would date men or women oh, yeah, after um, cuz Julia did not think that she would date women after surgery exclusively um, I didn't think it would be exclusive well sexually yeah. you thought that you would that you would need to be with a man in mm. order to, um, like, in order for it to really be sex for you, that it would, it would, like, need to be. Yeah, there, there was. So the whole thing with the surgery becoming imminent, right? My life started changing months before the surgery. Of course, I, I, I would see that it would have to. But I mean, I mean, in ways I didn't expect. Um, before I dated men and women, um, first brief time, um, and I was trying to figure out. I knew it was about identity, so I was good with that. But I couldn't figure out how am I going to have sex? Not not so much how, but how is this all going to work? Because if I have a vagina, I thought it would take penetration for me to be satisfied. I've learned that since it's not true. That's not true at all. Um, what I've learned since is, A, that I'm mostly attracted to women, and B, what little attraction I have for men is completely consumed by fear. Because you have to think about this. I went from being bigger and stronger than my partners. Now if I date a man, the chances are I'm smaller and definitely weaker so, for instance, if I have a gentleman friend over, once I shut that apartment door, all bets are off. Yeah. That's scary as all get out. But isn't that, isn't that true for all women? It is. It is, but I wasn't used to it. Right. 
I wasn't used to it. It, it was. I mean, I had to go. I had to go to counseling. I had to go to counseling because it was really making me anxious. You know, um, but yeah, that that. So before the surgery, things were really up in the air as far as how it was going to play out. Since then, I've I figured out, as we said, I figured out that I'm basically a lesbian. That's and and I'm happy with that. I just didn't know. I really didn't know. So here I am being the cliche of <laughs> being a lesbian in a man's body. Now no longer, but before that's what I was. Right. Um, so yeah, it's... There, there have been... So can we talk about the surgery itself? You can talk about anything you want. Let's talk about the surgery okay. because that's... So I didn't want to know much. I only wanted to know what do I have to do and right. what should I expect. But I didn't want to know the, the, the details and of how it was done and all that. I didn't know. I didn't want to know. I knew I had to do it or I was going to kill myself. I knew that. So I did it. Um, one of the hardest, or one of, how would I put it, one of the most difficult aspects after surgery, which makes me laugh to this day, was I had to learn to pee. <laughs> I had to learn to pee. Because if you think about it, your urethra is, you know, so much shorter. Right. And you're using completely different muscles in a completely different way. Whereas with a male, you tend to relax a little bit, and then you push with your stomach, and it comes out like, oh, get out, right? Right. Whereas now, I have to relax different muscles, and I can't just squeeze, or it stops. <laughs> it's different. Okay. And so when I first went to pee because I had to pee before I left the hospital so they knew that I was working oh yeah I see when I went to pee you I mean they wouldn't let you leave, leave the hospital until you had until I had gotcha. passed okay when I went to pee I pooped because <laughs> you, you know you're relaxing muscles right. down there and, and yeah. I didn't know which ones to do yeah then I'd stand up I'd pee <laughs> it took about three weeks okay it took about three weeks but um the surgery itself was six hours wow um and uh, I was very fortunate. I had no complications to speak of. Um, the only complication at all was the outside of my thighs were numb, and that was from the position I was in during surgery. But that that has almost all gone away. Um, okay. But um, no complications, and that's rare. And um, if you if you do get um, Dr. Brocious. Yeah, I was going to say that says something for the uh, the surgeon who performed the surgery. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I'm I, I'm. It, there's always a possibility in any kind of surgery of something going wrong. So I would say it's a probability that there are some complications yeah. for most patients. Right. But I was really lucky. I didn't pop a stitch, nothing. Just nothing. Well, did, did you follow all of the instructions when you left the hospital? I did, and here's the thing that I think is really important to note, was that I had somebody there, Bianca. Right. Tally. I had somebody there who was able to cook and do all the things because I could only stand for a few minutes at a time after surgery. I had I could get up, I could walk a little bit, but I had to go lay down. So I couldn't have cooked for myself without pushing it. Right. And that's where I think people get into trouble. Um, the other thing that I hear from the doctors is that dilation is super important. And that's something. Dilation, for those who don't know, is using uh, basically a surgical, a series of surgical dildos to keep the vagina open. Because it's like a pierced ear. If, if you don't keep it open, it will close. Yeah. Well, I that think, makes sense. Uh, it's, important, it's important to have somebody there to, like, to help take yeah. care of you for a while afterwards. But it's also... It, Extremely Isn't that one of the conditions of having the surgery? Don't they make sure that you have someone or, or that you're in an environment? No? They don't give a it's shit? six days in the hospital, then you're out. Wow. They, they, they encourage you to have some. Right, okay. But making they don't make sure. That's up gotcha. to you. But, like, the, uh, the dilation and irrigation of, yeah. of it, like... That is so important, and doing the dilation, like, that's something that you're going to have to do 
forever. Mm-hmm. Really? It's, okay. It's a commitment. Like, mm-hmm. I'm glad that I could be there and help you, but, like, that's such a little bit of it. Like, that's a big part of it because, like I say, you gave me the start that I needed. But it's a, it, the other, the, like, the, the do-it-yourself stuff yeah. is a huge, huge commitment. And it's basically, like, this procedure is a one-shot deal. Mm-hmm. It's a huge thing that, that you're getting. But if you don't take care of it, that's that. And they, you don't have another penis. They can't do this procedure for you again. It will close and... Then you're really um, screwed. Yeah. Or you're never for screwed. For having never screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So when you first get out of surgery, um, after six days, you have to start dilating right away. Um, stitches and all. And it's three times a day for 20 minutes. Holy shit. And it's... Yeah, it's, it's a commitment. It's a process because after that you have to irrigate to get all the lubrication out and all that. Right. And kind of help clean, keep it clean. Um, it's three times a day for, I think, the first... Three months, and then, or two months, two or three, I forget. Uh, Dr. Brochus will remember better than me. And then um, then it's up to six months, twice a day. And then at six months, you drop to once a day. Now, I just saw the doctor Wednesday for my yearly, since I had the surgery, and he said that um, I could probably go to every second or third day, given my current situation, which I won't do. Right. I'm not going to do it. I may drop the well, time. Well, I take a chance, yeah. I may drop it to 15 minutes a day, right? but I'm going to do it every day. Okay. Um, I waited 48 years, and like she said, it's a one-shot deal. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not ruining this if I can at all prevent it, you know. Um, Isn't today your birthday? Oh, uh, no, Tuesday. What Tuesday. Last Tuesday or next Tuesday? Last Tuesday. Okay, well, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Um, so... And I'm not supposed to ask your age, so. <laughs> I'm 29, thank you. <laughs> um, no. One of the things I did not expect was, um, there's a lot of things I didn't expect. and I'm still, I can imagine. And I'm still in therapy, um, and she's helping me kind of sort it all out. Um, but... Uh, <sighs> Dealing with men as a woman... Like, I remember I told you I was afraid before surgery? Right. Since then, what I've learned is women put up with a lot more than most men realize. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I, I'm, I'm amazed every day that they don't kill us in our sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's simple little things like um, having a conversation. If I was in the middle of four or five men and somebody asked, who was that in the movie blank? Right. And I said, oh, you know... Tippy Hedron. I don't know. I just I and I put out a name and I'm right. Somebody else will say, "Oh, Tippy Hedron," and that's it. Yeah. You don't get hurt as much. Yeah. It's just all these little things, you know. Um, not, and I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. But the difference and the perspective that I have, I think, is pretty unique. To go from a entitled white male to a white female, and the differences are just remarkable. You know, I can imagine. Yeah, because it it I mean it. Well, I was gonna say it it takes a complete and total mind shift. But if what you've said, from what I understand, from what you've said, the mind shift was already there. Oh no, it's still going on. Is it? it okay. It's taking. It's taken probably a year and a half so far. Okay. And it's still going on. All right. But I've, I'm, one of the little things I learned is never gas up after dark. Because one night, 3.30 in the morning, I realized my tank was empty. I had to get gas. I stopped, and I had a car circling the island where I was gassing up. There was nobody there but me and this car. And eventually he started saying some pretty raunchy stuff to me. And when I went to go into the gas station, the doors were locked. <laughs> Because they were cleaning right. between two and four a.m., they clean, but they leave the pumps open for credit. Right. I went to go in. He pulled up right behind me, and I lost my composure. He left, thankfully, and um, but I learned a lesson. 
and that's when we had uh, safety 101 with my therapist. She told me, you know, a lot of different things, phone down, head up, you know, just a lot of different things. But yeah. always keep your head on a swivel, always look around you. I have roughly the same mass that I had before. I have almost none of the muscle I had before. Um, and I don't present... When I was, when I had a male body, especially when I was um, living as male, whether or not I could defend myself wasn't the issue. I presented as a threat. Right. I had muscle mass. I was bigger. I was stronger. Now I don't. So whether or not I can handle myself isn't the issue. Now I have to continually prove myself. But but isn't the issue not so much whether or not you can handle yourself? but whether or not you are perceived as being able to handle yourself. And that's my point. Okay. That's exactly my All point, right. is that I, I, I'm not perceived as being able to handle myself. Right. There's been a big difference since, like, a huge difference since the surgery, more than I realized there would be. Mm -hmm. Because prior to the surgery, um, like, she lived as female and, like, used hormones and like mm -hmm. dressed as female and everything. But I just, obviously there was a big hormonal shift mm -hmm. and just such a big difference more like more than I could have imagined. So same, same here. I, I, the hormones changed my body, my brain, my chemistry, it changed a lot of things. But when the surgery happened, now the changes are happening. My body shape has changed completely. Um, well, I shouldn't say completely, but it's it's. I have hips a little bit now. Um, I have breasts, of course, um, but more than that. But I I don't even mean physically. Right. Like, you mean hormonally? Just who you like, how you carry yourself mm -hmm. and yeah, your mind. Yeah. It's. I'm still learning, so it's hard for me to pinpoint certain things. Right. But yeah, it's first of all, when when you remove testosterone from a male, the will to be aggressive is gone. Um and that alone changes all of the thinking, you know. Even my driving has changed. <laughs> which she'll tell you about but even my driving Thank is god yes <laughs> but even my driving has changed um it's for me it's wonderful because it's where my brain has always been right but it never could go right now i just feel so much more at peace you know i i used to you ever work on say a car yes and you're working on a car, and you're doing the same thing, and it's not working. And you keep going, you keep going, you try different things, you, you try different tools, you call up a friend, and finally you're ready to smash something, so you walk away. Right. That's how I used to wake up. Just like that. That frustrated I used to wake up. Now I don't. That's great. What, is, what has been the most difficult part of all this since, since you made the transition? What has been the most difficult for you? Dealing with all of the crap that a woman gets, really. It, so it, physically, it's, it's I'm external, fine. not yeah. internal. Yeah, it's not internal. It's it's dealing with it and learning how to deal with it. Because I can't just say, "Hey, screw you," and punch them. <laughs> right. Because I'm going to get killed. Yeah. You know. Um, so now it's now I have to learn finesse. I have to learn tricks. You know, like false numbers, fake numbers. I was just going to ask you if you do you have a specific phone number memorized that when <laughs> somebody asks you, you can give them that number. Seven two four eight four eight five. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's. I'm learning a lot, and I've gotten a ton of support, not just from Tally, but from a lot of girlfriends. And even a few guys. Um, it's been it's been really. I've been embraced, and that. <clears throat> so a, a friend, uh, not a friend, but a, a, an acquaintance, once described um, being transgender 
as being locked out of a room where all womanhood sits and all you can do is watch through a window. Now I'm in that room. My whole life it was torture looking through that window, seeing women be women and knowing I could never do it or thinking I could never do it. For the most part, uh, do you find that um, you have been accepted by other women in general? In general, yeah. As opposed to other men or men? Not just accepted, but embraced by women. And that's a big difference. I'm sorry, embraced by women? Yes, by women, yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm not talking about just your friends. I'm talking about people that... Strangers that you, come up strangers, to me, okay. say, I think you're great, I, I want to get to know you, that just happened um, this last week. Um, men, it's a little different. Uh, depending on a lot of factors, I guess I'm not going to go into it, but just depending on who they are. Um, after my surgery, I, I have a gentleman friend who brought me to my appointments when I couldn't drive, and he's been nothing, he's never hit on me, nothing, just a friend. And he's been very supportive, even though he is conservative Christian, um, which I find interesting, but nonetheless. Because, you know, and I, and I don't want to talk badly about Christians, but we know the Christian right, right. has been very down on trans and queer. And right. Whole bit. Well, you're talking about the Republican Jesus. Right. So, <laughs> so but no, he, he's been wonderful. Um, but there have been, I wrote a poem recently called Object. And it starts, um, you'll never be a woman, they say, but the same ones call at night and leave notes on my door. That is a significant percentage of men who won't talk to me in public, who will talk about me when I'm not there, but who still would date me if nobody knew. Hmm. And that's a, that's that's the scary part. Yeah. That's the real scary part because these are men who aren't at peace with themselves and their attraction to me. Do you think that that, that may be a sense of curiosity? Uh, I think there's curiosity. I think there's um, abhorrence. I'm sorry, that what? Abhorrence. Yeah, abhorrence, yeah. Yeah, um, for lack of a better word. But yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's attraction and repulsion at the same time. Um, I, I think it's a rich mix of emotions. The forbidden fruit or, or, or something gosh, along that? Yeah. Yeah. And what I also get is um, a lot of people, because I, I didn't do my voice, I didn't do my face. Right. Um, because the goal has never been for me to pass as a woman. The goal has been for me. You had me mentioned to, that originally, yeah. Yeah, the goal for me is to be a woman. Forget looking that that's for other people i just need to know that i am so i get a lot of people not a lot i get a number of people especially women who want to date me no i shouldn't say that it's both it's mixed men and women who want to date me until they find out i don't have a penis because of my face and my right. voice, a lot of people right. think I do. Right. Still. And so... They, 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 I'm sorry, is the term transvestite? A cross-dresser? You know, someone who dresses as a woman, but they're not... Well, it, that gets, that speaks to gender, really. And less, it, okay. less, just, less dressing, because you have drag queens, you have cross-dressers, you have transgender women. Cross-dressing is not really in vogue right now, but it, I think it's still usable. Right. Um... A former partner of mine, her father was what she would refer to as a cross-dresser. He never went out, he never, but he would do that at home. Right. You know. Um, but yeah, I lost my point. But but <laughs> you can, uh, like you can, <clears throat> like you can be a trans woman without getting surgeries or anything. Right. But. Um, but yeah, it's like cross-dressing and, and, is uh, something Thank else. you for bringing up that point. It, it's, it's because I think that that might be, uh, I wasn't aware of that. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I, I, my thought was that you are only a trans woman if you've had the surgery. No. 
No, okay. not at all. Yeah. Some men enjoy cross dressing, and that doesn't. Make yeah, and them that does. Yeah, that, woman, no, no, right? no, and 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 I understand that 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 doesn't mean that they you know right. that they just enjoy. But that. yeah, you can like not all trans women decide to have surgeries. Most of or them. or can't. Right, that's the other thing, and that's a big thing. Gatekeepers. There was a. Um, a post on Facebook that a uh, I have a friend in uh, Massachusetts where I came from she is transgender came out uh, about the same time I did back in 14 she did I came out in 12 um, and she's a city councilwoman now and, and which I, I just love um, she posted something about um, regret regarding elective surgeries and for uh, breast augmentation for cisgender women cisgender for those who don't know cisgender is when your brain and your body match so normal. Right. So breast augmentation and knee surgery have about a 30% regret rate. Um, bottom surgery has about a 1% to 2% regret rate. Yet, we have... And, and, and what you're saying is 1% to 2% of the people who have the surgery regret it. Right. That's what you mean by regret, right? Rate. Okay, and, that, and that's and I that's, just want to clarify that. That's by the most radical numbers. Right. Usually, it's less than one percent. Right. But yet, we have the highest burden by far of any group to get that elective surgery. We need not one but two letters from a therapist, which means you have to go to therapy. Right. Which means you have to pay for it. The insurance won't cover it. Right. We need to live as a woman for two years. You need, uh, I can't even remember, you need to be on hormones for two years. That, that is medically necessary. Um, but you don't have to live as a woman for two years. You just have to know. And I've had doctors tell me that they decide whether I'm transgender or not. No, you don't. No, you don't. I know. I mean, I can see if they're talking about a 13-year-old. Right. But even then... See that 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 is is part of my, uh, I I think that, and and I know I know your story and I know that at an early age that you felt that way. Mm -hmm. um, what is your opinion? At at what age should an individual be allowed to have that surgery, or should there be restrictions? Children, as far as I know, are not getting the surgery. As far as I know. Okay, define getting, children. What, what Under 18. Under 18, okay. As that, far as I know. Thank you. Um, I'm, Unless yeah, it's I'm with parental I'm not sure right. in this, yeah, I'm not sure in this country or but anything. You even but you can. Um, but I do know, um, I think, well, I, I'm sure it's different now, but the youngest person that I'm aware of um, is a girl in, in Germany transitioned. Um yeah, otherwise, I don't know, but... Um, and how old was she? She was 16 when she okay. transitioned. I and, and that's, you know, by that, that time, at least you're starting but that was to a few, get like, that was a ago. sense of, of, of what the consequences of your action would be. And I, I think that's, that's if, if, if you can show, this is just my own personal opinion... If you can show that you understand and are aware of the consequences of what you're going to do, I think that that needs to be a prerequisite of having this surgery. Well, I think in the, in the U.S., as far as I know, um, children, under 18, children, are looking for um, puberty blockers. Oh, uh, well, uh, looking for what? Puberty blockers, oh. so to stop puberty. Gotcha. Especially because, especially think about it. If you're a born a male, and you are looking to transition, you want to stop puberty, because that's what develops the male muscle mass. That's what develops the lower voice. That's what develops the hair growth. These are all things I have to deal with, because I didn't. But the surgery doesn't usually come until they're at least eighteen. Right. So what they're trying to do at a young age is just get the hormones and the puberty blockers going so that if they do decide to get surgery, they're good. Is that reversible? In other words, if they stop the hormones... Some and, of it is. Okay. Some of it is. Um, but, sorry, um, this just, like, yeah, it's this isn't, like, an easy... Right. So, uh, sorry, this just came up recently, like, because mm -hmm. um, some... Jason Aldean, country singer's wife, 
made this post on Twitter that has just been everywhere lately. And it was um, like, I want to thank my parents for um, basically she wanted to thank her parents for not um, like getting her getting her surgery because because she was a tomboy when she was young mm. but that and I, I, right I, there's a difference there i mean being <laughs> These, a tomboy they're just not even similar but it was so it was just such an awful yeah. stupid being a tomboy pose doesn't and, mean that you can't be feminine or that you're not a, a female right uh, not even I, I, it's just you know. not even similar but it was getting it was getting like retweeted and stuff everywhere and they're just not similar things and like that's important to know and um we yeah we talked about once i've like i i know i've told we we've talked about this again um but it was the first i don't know it was, it, it made a huge like difference for me in my mind um the lobster when you told oh. me about the lobster it yeah. took it like it took me to another level of really understanding and are you going to share that yeah yeah okay. so, so uh do you want to yeah it, okay you can tell it gender dysphoria which is that schism that i talk about between your gender where your brain right is saying you're a female in my case and I have a male body. When I was nine and I realized I wasn't a girl, the way I realized it was I was in bed one night and I put my hand down there and my world just blew up. I was like, what the hell is this? It was like finding a lobster-sized tick where you expect your vagina to be. And, and speaking of abhorrence, the first thing you want to do is get rid of it, but you can't. So that's... That's basically what gender dysphoria was like for me. Okay. I tried to imagine that, and it just, to like... Have, you know, it took this big on your body. Yeah. In the worst place. Yeah. It, 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 and I just, I got it on a whole new level. Yeah. Like... And, and that's the reason why... It's not why. being a tomboy, it's that. Yeah. And... So you have to be able to discern, and that's really down to the parents, because they know their children. It's also down to the child. You have to trust your child. You know, children. There's another thing I saw where they say children identify as that uh, can identify as a dinosaur, Barney, or right. whatever. But they know the difference. This hits so hard and is so dramatic that I don't know. It's a tough thing. It's a tough thing for children. I think, and I think parents have to be very careful what they do it it's tough enough being a kid right <laughs> you know and growing up and 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 you know learning about life and and you know that's tough enough without adding additional burdens if you take away parental support from a transgender child they're 40 percent likely to attempt suicide i i've read that yes if you add and that's one probably parent, undershooting it. right if you add one parent, it drops to 4%. If you have wow. one parent that supports them. Like, almost like normal kids. As long as you support them, you know. That doesn't mean you have to give them surgery at 14. That's not happening. Right. It just means you, you things like name changes, you know, gender name change, um, wearing different clothes, letting them do it. Because that's the only way they're going to know. Right. You know, for sure. That's the only way they're going to know. And the thing is, and I know I've mentioned this on the show before, on a different show before, um, you can take all the things I've been through in my life. Um, there's been, you know, not that I'm any different than anybody else, but there's been multiple rapes as a child. Um, my time in the service. Um, all those things added up don't equal gender dysphoria for me. Um, and kids are getting hit with this. This is when it hits you, when you're four, when you're seven, like me when I was nine, right. when you're 12. When you don't have the words, you don't have the coping skills, you don't have any strategies, you don't know who to talk to or what to even talk about. And, and I, of course, being the generation that I am, I was born in the 60s, um, 
I was terrified that someone would find out. Terrified. So, you know, it's 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 a very serious thing that affects our kids that I think needs to be addressed in a better way. But we are in the middle of the civil rights movement right now for trans people, which means it's going to take time. It's going to take time to work it out, like Leah Thompson, right, the swimmer. That's just that's one example. And people are jumping oh, all Thomas. over. Is it Thomas? Leah Thomas. Okay. <laughs> Leah Thompson is an actress. actress. <laughs> I was just gonna say yeah, Leah Thomas. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was curious I knew who what you were she did. About. Right, that's, but that's but that's gonna work itself out. It's just gonna take time because a lot of people are up in arms about her setting records and all that. I get it. It it it's and and that that's an area that I don't know if I have an opinion or not. I, I don't. I mean, I understand some of the medical you know that you do lose body mass you do lose some of your strength and things like that when you transition as a woman um and and but there's I, I, you know i don't know how i feel about trans people competing in sports unless they are competing against other trans people i, I think i've know. said that before I mean, yeah, yeah okay. i don't know what the answer is personally for myself i don't right. even know what it is the only thing i can go by because i have no I've never played sports now as uh, against women and I'm told to do it now really so the only thing I can go by is um, Renee Richards right um, I've, if I've got the names right I believe it was her that came back in 75 um, I saw it on the news if I remember correctly I was 10 years old um, so I knew there was an option there was surgery at a very early age I was lucky but when she came back and she lobbied and won to play women's tennis and she destroyed all the competition right when she was retired later in life she said it wasn't fair that's all i can go by yeah that's all i have to go by that's the only person i know who has lived it and 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 but it was also uh billy jean king kicked some ass too mm -hmm. and she wasn't a trans woman so no. You know, so right. but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and 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 if Renee Richards felt that that was um, unfair, I I understand that. It's so. it's again. I mean, it's just too complicated. It's very complicated. Yeah. It's very oh, there's no easy answers. If there were easy answers, we'd all be a lot nicer to each other. I'd like <laughs> to see. I'd like to see leagues open to men, women, trans women, trans men. Yeah. And if you're good enough, you play. And if you're not good enough, then you go down a league. Kind of like ranked voting. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. Had to throw that in there. <laughs> but yeah. Here in the state of Nevada, vote question three, three vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, I mean, for the most part, almost entirely, I am just happy. What has been the easiest part of all of this? Or the most, what has been the most gratifying <laughs> um, okay, so without, without getting into toys or anything. No, 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 no. No, um, no the most gratifying part hasn't been toys. No, I'm good. No, but it hasn't been. I mean, because a lot of people think that maybe dilation is fun. It's not. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> about 95, what I've been told is about 95% of women after surgery like I've had, um, can orgasm I can cool so that's been one of the more gratifying parts how is that different from before um, I mean yeah so you you've experienced orgasms as a man as you've a experienced man, yeah. it as a woman yeah it's trickier as a woman I'm sorry trickier trickier as okay. a woman yeah um, yeah that I get it's it's there's I'm still figuring it all out sure uh, but well, you're only a year old. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely trickier. Um, yeah, I mean, just the fact that you figured it out in the first year is... Yeah. Um, it's... I'm more sensitive um, in a lot more areas, and how I get there is completely different from how I got there as a male. Um for me anyway now it takes much more alignment with my mind and my body to be in that mood right um but yeah it's it's a wonderful thing 
um, I'm more prone to have multiples. I haven't yet, but I did right before the surgery, and I credit that to the hormones. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely what it means, and and it's not a big thing. Orgasm, it's not a big thing. It's just what it means is I can. The potential is there. Right. That's all I wanted. Right. Just the potential. You know, I can work out the rest. Right. I just needed the potential. You know, um, and I think that's remarkable given the complexity of the surgery and all the nerves involved and everything no shit it's remarkable <laughs> it's really remarkable so um yeah that that has definitely been one of the most gratifying things the probably the most gratifying i guess is being accepted into women's circles having girlfriends who are like you know we got to go out let's get changed and we get changed right i mean there's i'm not looking i'm just there and I'm being accepted as you know it's like locker room right you know yay yay I, it's all I've ever wanted that's all I've ever wanted um, a transgender boy um, of a, a, somebody I, I know through a friend 14 year old one of the things he wrote to me because we, we correspond he wrote to me about he dates another boy um, who was cisgender, and watching him just be, just be a boy, you know, play baseball, do whatever, makes him cry because he can't, because he still has a female body. Gotcha. And all that. And so, and I used to feel that way. I used to watch TV when I was younger, when I was in my 30s, 40s. I would watch TV and I would see two women talking, just sharing a moment you know, like over lunch or whatever, I would start crying because I was locked out of that. Right. I was locked out, you know. Um, so and, and that is is a sad commentary on us as human beings that, that because of that difference, I mean, on the one hand it should be celebrated, but on the other hand it's, it's, it's something that keeps us apart. Do you know what I mean? That that men and women can't, for the most part, share in some of those experiences. And I'm not talking about sexually. I'm just talking right. about, you know, if you put a man in a group of women or a woman in a group of men, they are... Uh, it's an awkward situation. Yeah. For that and, reason. And, for the and, and it's too bad that we can't be the same no matter the... Well, this is this the is social. Where, this is where I think if people respected the opinions of transgender people more, um, they would listen to us. So, so is it your goal, or or part of your goal to convert as many people as possible to trans? No. No. Oh, thank God for that, no. dumbasses. <laughs> That that was taken off my agenda. Okay. No. Uh, no um, but no, you had to it, sign a waiver when you. Right. <laughs> but no, it's a club, you know, yeah, like any other club. No. Um, I. And think, that's of course a misconception. Yeah. You know, that 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 and and the same with gay people. Right. No, gay people don't want to convert everybody. You know, and 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 as I, we had this conversation prior on, on on the last interview, and that is, I'm attracted to women. Mm -hmm. Not all women. There are there are specific women that I'm attracted to, you know, because of the the way they talk or or the way they act or or you know the way they look. But it doesn't mean that if you if I saw an exact copy of that woman that I would be attracted to her as well mm -hmm. because of differences on you know how they talk or walk or or, or right. whatever. So I I, I understand that. Um, and I don't know where I'm going with that, but anyway. <laughs> no, I think, I think perspective is one of the most valuable things in life. And being who I am, and, and, and all transgender people being who they are, um, they've been blessed with a different perspective. And you talk about... They actually have a dual perspective. Yeah. 
And they so, actually do. They are able to and have been in a situations where they are able to identify with two different thought processes or, or, or experiences or... Two different ways of being. Yeah. And it's... I think if we were listened to more, it would help bring men and women together in, yeah. a, in, a, in a more cohesive way, a, a better I'm all way. for that. Yeah. yeah. So. You know. Sorry. No. <laughs> I, I do. I, I, think, I think that it's really important um, to tap into uh, transgender folks' um, ideas and their minds because because we just we see things differently because we've had to and and we're kind of running out of time and sure. I want to uh, there's a couple of things I want to cover number one um, is there anything that you would like to say to Dr. Brocious who performed the surgery is there anything that you would like to say to him that you haven't yet or just for whatever reason um, there's only one thing, and I've told it. I've told him, but I can say it again because it bears repeating. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. It's it's. He, I met him in June of last year, and he had me in surgery in October. Yeah. In the middle of COVID. He was. A, we had him as a guest here shortly after uh, mm -hmm. we had you, and um, I got to say he was. Uh, extremely enlightening, uh, giving us a perspective that that a lot of us didn't have prior to that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that what he's doing is amazing, um, and uh, I, I think it's it, it's a credit to him and his profession, the dedication that he has shown to his patients, mm -hmm. and uh, the guy's got an interesting story. I can't wait to get him back in here. That's a hint, Doc, that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be getting to you to get you back in here and and talk to you again. So, uh, yeah. so just, be warned. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful, and especially as you just said, he's not just a doctor. He really cares, and he does uh, he does some political work. As far as I, I believe, he was um, part of the committee that. Not committee, but the contingent that brought um, bathroom equity to Nevada. Right. Where people like me, and some people don't like this, but people like me before my surgery, when I still had a penis, could use the female bathroom or whatever bathroom I was comfortable with. You know, so he, he's active, not just in his role as a surgeon, but outside of that, too. You know, and, and, and that's interesting because so many people are worried about some guy going into a woman's bathroom and harassing the woman or the little girls or whatever but they don't say a damn thing about the men who go into men's room and mess with little boys hmm. i don't understand yeah. that they they I, you don't you know if you really cared and and all of that was as important to you as you say it is then you would have separate bathrooms for children and separate bathrooms for adults yeah. so there <laughs> I think one seaters are what we need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you said there were a couple things you wanted to cover. One well, that was, was one of one, one of them was the doctor. One of them was a. Uh, uh, oh, I, I just wanted to thank you for you know coming in and sharing your story. Uh, the original uh, interview that we did just got a huge audience. Uh, I, I've gotten a lot of comments of it Good. since then, and um, you kind of helping take the mystery out of people with different perspectives and 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 how you know we can we're basically all in this together and yeah. we, we have different ways of doing things and you know so uh i just want to thank you for john, for sharing you. that thank you john uh, it, it's this is what i want to do you know is is get the word out that i mean first of all yes i'm trans and i'm a woman i'm really a photographer and when i and when people get to know me that's what we talk about that that your photography is phenomenal 
Well, thank you. And and so is your paintings. Thank you. And and there's been a couple there that I just saw and I went, wow. And I did not realize how long have you been painting now? I knew I knew you had been in the photography for a while, but how long have you been painting? Ten months. Really? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, Damn. photography has helped a lot because it's taught me about composition, right? Color, that kind of thing, right? But yeah, so. I, I don't go to gay bars. I don't go, there's no trans bars. They're really just part of a gay bar. Um, I, I mean, I do go to them, but I don't go to them because I'm trans. I go to them because some of my friends go there. Right. But when I go to a bar, or when I go to a club or whatever I do, it's just people. Yeah. I'm just a person. I, I, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this. But many years ago, I managed the lesbian bar here in town. Did you really? Yeah. I wish we had another one. No. It was it was a very famous. It was actually a world famous uh, bar. There are very few of them. Yeah, I know. It was like fifteen or so. Uh, but uh, it was called Maxine's. Mm -hmm. It was out on uh, Charleston and Nellis, mm -hmm. and this was back in the late seventies, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. um, I, I learned a lot from that experience. I and, you did. and and was um, the the, big, the biggest kick I got it was because it was not far from Nellis Air Force Base, mm -hmm. and so you'd have these airmen, you know, driving down Nellis, and they would see this bar off to the just the side of the road, and and they would pull in and come in and sit down, and they're looking around, and they're seeing all these women, and they're going. This is, I, I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> and then they start seeing, you know, what's going on and all of that. And uh, it, it was awesome to see the ones that would get up and leave immediately. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome to see the ones that would come back. And, and not, you know, not for negative reasons, but come back because they were welcomed. And, and, you know, as long as they were respectful, they were being respected. And they'd been converted. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, unfortunately, uh, well, not unfortunately, but no, that, that, wasn't, the, uh, that wasn't the issue. So, so they didn't turn you into a lesbian? Oh, yeah, I've been a lesbian my whole life. <laughs> I, 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 I just, um, and there, there, is, uh, there is something about women that I appreciate. There, I, I Thank don't, you. No, I, I, I don't know what it is. It's, 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 um, there's something that uh, I feel a, a kinship, you know, with women and um, a, a kinship with men as well, but on a different level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can, I can appreciate some of the things that women go through. Um, and, and believe me, growing up, I, I, I was a fucking idiot. <laughs> You know, and, and when I think back now on, on the way that I have treated, you know, people, whether it's women or minorities or whatever, my grandfather was a huge bigot. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, down in his soul. And, and uh, I'm just thankful that I, once you get out and away from your original environment and you get to meet people, and I, I had the advantage of being in the military and, and getting a chance to go different parts of the world and meeting people from different parts of the world and realizing, dude, we're all in this together, mm -hmm. you know? Hey, we all want the same thing. And I, I think that's, that's an extremely important part of education that we should be taking advantage of. I mean, if we took kids at 12, 13, 14 years old and shipped them off to some other part of the world, and, and, you know, I mean, in a safe environment, of course. But that, that's the, um, uh, what do we used to call it, the uh, foreign exchange student mm -hmm. program. Uh, exposing uh, young people to the world around them and not try to limit their experiences right. so that they turn out the way we are. Right, yeah. Anyway, that's it. So, anyway, uh, last words, anything that you'd like to say? To those people, I hope this has been educational. How about really you, good. there, kiddo? Thanks for doing this. And John, yeah, you're thank welcome. You. Thank you very much. And uh, this is another perfect example of if you're going to do it, do it with styles. <laughs> nice work, John.